Hi guys, Wayne's Butler here. Well, as you can see, uh, Captain America finally arrived. I first want to start out by uh, dedicating this particular video to uh, the ladies in the hobby, uh, especially Miss Queen V. I had the fortunate uh, opportunity last night to finally talk to her. Uh, I know she really loves this figure, really loves the movie, and I know she really loves this, this genre. And uh, I also tip my hat to all the other ladies that are watching these videos. Uh, it's much appreciated. It's, uh, it's great to see the, the women in the hobby. So anyways, let's get into it here. Captain America. Uh, looking at this figure right now, it's, uh, as you guys all know out there, it's an awesome figure. Uh, the fabric, uh, the stitching, everything on it, the detail. I'll give you a bit of a spin around here first. Well, let's, anyway, let's first start. I want to talk about this head sculpt. Now, this head sculpt, a lot of people have been talking about it, and I don't really know what all the hype is about. I mean, uh, uh, it's, a man, it's a man in a helmet. It's, it's a man wearing a mask. I mean, it doesn't have to look like Chris Evans. It has to look like Captain America, uh, which it does in spades, guys. I mean... Shit, if I wore this helmet, I'd probably look like Elvis. So, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it, you know, it doesn't really matter. It, it, the, the head sculpt is awesome. You know, it's awesome. Uh, all the detail on the side of the helmet here. Fantastic job. Uh, down into the, into the suit itself, like I was saying. The, the stitching on it is, uh, you know, top notch. Really, really impressed with it. Uh, the suit's a little rough in areas up in this area here. It's a little rough, but uh, guys, for a one-six scale figure, uh, it, you know they couldn't have done anything better. You know they absolutely couldn't have done it any better. And actually, with this particular figure, as some of you guys know, it does come with uh, ex extension pegs, and uh, which I have installed them here, so it does make the figure a little taller. Actually, makes it look a little better. I know some of you guys didn't get them, but uh, you should have. And uh, anyways, it really uh, makes the figure look a lot realistic. And you get down in the belt, you know, it has a standard pouch. It's just like the movie. Uh, weathered a little bit, uh, you know. What more can you say, guys? It's awesome. I do want to talk about this uh, gun holster a little bit. Now, a word of caution, guys. When you go to open this flap up, be very, very careful that you... Uh, remove the flap from the ball on the peg or you'll end up like me and end up pulling the peg right out of the the holster itself. Now I was able to get the gun in and get it closed up and everything like that so uh, unfortunately this gun probably won't be coming back out again because I don't really like how that peg is attached to the holster but that's okay. It's not really a complaint, just, just more of an observation guys so be really really careful. So I'll be turning around in the back and we get into this famous shield that we've all learn to love and enjoy. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's excellent. You know, it's got that that chromium finish to it. Uh, the only other thing about this shield, guys, now it's it's not really a complaint. It's more of an observation. Uh, it would have been nice if it had been weathered. I mean, from the second he hangs the thing on his back at the beginning of the movie, it already has uh, you know the the scrapes and everything on the shield. Now it would probably be fairly easy to add that. Uh, I don't have the balls to do it. Uh, and I can't imagine anybody out there is going to be doing it either, but someone who has some talent could probably make this shield look exactly like the movie. Uh, the other thing about this shield, apparently people on the assembly line didn't wear gloves. So it's got fingerprints all over it. And you guys know that I do wear gloves. So, But that's, again, it's not really a big problem. I mean, it, uh, I guess, you know, kind of adds to the weathering, I guess. And you turn around here and you get down into the boots. I mean, the boots are, you know, are perfect. Uh, does they, you know, they do look like they have laces in them. They you know, got a bit of weathering on them. Uh, the articulation is, uh, you know, the way you think it would be. And, uh, you know, we got the pouches here. Again, from the movie, I was kind of debating whether or not to even put the thing on there because I kind of like it. Uh, the cleanliness without them on there, but I thought, no, it's, you know, they're going to detract too much from the movie accuracy of it. Now as you can see here, I don't have the shield mounted on it. 
I actually particularly like the way this thing is posed right now, and I actually like uh, the shield hanging on the back. I know a lot of you guys will uh, probably adamantly disagree. I'll probably put it on the arm eventually. But I just really like the cleanliness and the cleanliness of the lines and everything, just the way this figure sits right now with its head tipped down. I mean, this is probably how I will pose it in the short run. Like I said, I'll put the shield on uh, eventually. Uh, one thing I want to add about the shield, though, when you do go to install it, guys, first off, uh, wear a pair of, uh, use a pair of tweezers to uh, unhook that clasp. Uh, that'll be a lot easier. And the other thing, when you go to install the hand, up in here into the uh, lower part of the arm, I would suggest pulling the peg out of the arm and installing it in the fist first and installing that as a complete assembly as it, instead of trying to jam that hand when it's in the shield over top that little tiny peg that's sitting at, uh, at the end of the arm. You're going to fight with it a lot more. With the, the peg in the hand, uh, it's going to slide into the arm a whole lot easier. But you really shouldn't have any trouble putting this shield on. But like I said, use a pair of tweezers and be very, very careful. And, uh, you know, I really didn't talk about the box here. I mean, there's not really a whole much to say. It's, you know, it's got the shield. It's got the picture of Captain America. You know, just standard Hot toy stuff. Uh, standard uh, shoebox style. Uh, clamshell uh, piece inside to hold everything together. I actually got this figure from uh, Secret Compass. Like I said, it arrived yesterday. Now, unfortunately, they, uh, like some companies do, they ship it in a shipper box uh, with stickers all over it. Now, fortunate enough for me, you know, it wasn't damaged in any way, shape, or form, but uh, I particularly don't like when companies do that, and I would be probably very hesitant in buying something off them in the future. That's why I like stores like uh, Corner Store Comics and uh, Toy Square and, uh, you know, my boy here in town. That's why I like dealing with them because. Uh, you know, almost guaranteed to get your figure in perfect shape, and they almost always double box stuff. So, guys, this is going to be just quick and easy. Uh, I know our buddy Dean got this figure. I guess you've probably uh, all seen his uh, video by now. It's awesome. Uh, there's a part two coming up. Uh, we all love you, Dean, and uh, I know you're going to do this figure justice. Well, guys, it's here. It's uh, Saturday noon up here in Canada. Weather's still pretty decent. No snow yet, thankfully. And that's it, guys. I guess maybe we'll see you on blog. It's nice to uh, talk to some of you guys out there that I've never met. I love meeting new people. And it's a lot of fun. Please join us. My love goes out to you too, Kairos, for starting this. And that's it for today, guys. Wings Butler signing off. Peace and love to all.